Kenya Crafts presents Yard Flamingo Buzzards. Hey crafters, welcome to this week's video. Here this week we're going to take these plain old uh, pink flamingo yard ornaments and make them into these awesome Halloween buzzard yard ornaments. All right, let's go. Okay, so we'll get started here. Uh, I, first thing I did was take some sandpaper and go all over everything. This step is to rough it up a little bit so that the paint sticks a little bit better. Uh, they were really slick, and so I felt that it was best that we did this so that they would stay nice. So uh, they're injection molded. Uh, so I didn't really worry about the seam too much. Uh, none of them were really very bad. But uh, if you had some that had a worse seam, you could even take uh, a, uh, a knife to it and remove some excess if you needed to. Now here I'm using some isopropyl alcohol. I happen to have 91%. 70% is fine. We're just uh, rubbing all over and removing any dust created from the sandpaper and uh, any releasing agent from the molding process. Now we are bringing this over and we are creating a kind of a, a neck feather clump uh, to give some extra details. We're just using some hot glue, you know, my favorite, favorite tool. Uh, if anybody, you know, wants to send me some hot glue for me to try, I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> all right, we're just sticking the, and I'm only putting one uh, pole in each bird because I am going to cut them in half because I am going to arrange them with the tombstones that we made last week in my yard out front so uh i did not want that large of a hole down in my tombstone and so we're going to cut them in half and uh utilize the rest of the uh poles for other reasons now each bird kind of has his own little personality that developed throughout this whole process you know some of them had big clumps of feathers some of it was wide some of it was droopy uh it was a it was a fun thing and i used different techniques uh i kind of globbed i i drizzled uh you'll just kind of have to play and see what you like best um and and as you practice you'll decide what te techniques you like where because the same technique is not going to work the best uh for every situation now on the first one i did not like i set it down too early and it kind of slumped forward so i fixed it a little bit um i put the excess back in my glue pot only because i knew exactly how clean the glue was and that i was not going to be contaminating the rest of my glue pot all right so after I let those dry for about 20 minutes, then I brought them over and became, uh, began applying the first coat of black. I just picked a matte black uh, for this particular occasion. And this is the technique that I found worked uh, the best, uh, holding on to his head and beak first and then painting the rest of the body. So, uh, I did try this next one, uh, going the opposite direction. Uh, I thought it was awkward, uh, going from the other direction. So I decided to try it this way. This was actually way more awkward and I quickly ran out of places to hold it. And then it just wanted to spin around in my hand the whole time I was trying to paint. It was really annoying. So I really do recommend, um, holding his beak and face as you go and painting that last because all if you hold the 
stem against your stomach, uh, it will stop spinning uh, mostly. So, uh, and here, you know, we're getting out the Godzilla costume. Uh, excuse me. So this, I believe, is the third bird. And I did end up putting uh, a second coat on all these, uh, but I thought that this process was a little tedious for you guys to have to sit and watch twice. So I uh, did the second coat off camera. Uh, when I came back and looked at them after I let them dry for some time, I did notice a couple spots where the pink was shining through. And so I felt a second coat was necessary. Man, I wish I could paint this fast, like for reals. Okay, so here I am taking uh, some pewter gray and I'm mixing it with antique white. And what we're going to do is uh, give a coat to those neck feather clumps. And uh, I just have a, a nice flat brush. I picked kind of a narrow one. So, because it's not a very big area, uh, I didn't pick the smallest one I had, um, but I didn't figure I needed a very big brush. I did uh, keep, like, pick this nice, firm, smooth bristles, and you know, I didn't even have to hardly worry about keeping in the lines. You just, uh, a lot of it is not over applying uh, your paint to the paintbrush if you just kind of dip the tip in and uh, go from there you'll you'll learn how much you need just experiment and if you ever mess up too bad just paint everything all over with your base coat uh, in that spot or area and go from there the, I've been doing this these kind of things uh, since I was about eight uh, many of the techniques that I learned, uh, like the dry brushing, uh, is are things that I learned while painting ceramics with my grandmother and my mother when I was young. And so although I am now uh, painting on, uh, say, plastic or even, uh, well, 3D prints or plastic, uh, other things, it doesn't matter. All the same techniques still apply. So I'm not trying to completely coat everything. I still want the black to kind of show through, but I am uh, just taking a little bit and uh, just kind of lightly touching over. Uh, I might have, uh, if I did this again, I may actually thin out the espresso bean for this part. Although I really do like the way it turned out, so maybe not. feel like I should supply you with, uh, uh, like elevator music, strangers in the night. So I believe this is the fourth bird. We are almost done with this step. And, uh, I'm just using, I'm, dipping and then I'm actually even rubbing some off in another one of the cupolas of my paint tray so that I don't have as much loaded in there. All right, now I'm just going to quickly apply a second coat to the neckband here. It just uh, really started to make it pop once we put that second coat on. And like I said, if you don't overload your brush and you pick the right brush for the job at hand, uh, you don't even hardly have to worry about getting outside the lines, quote unquote. 
But you know, that's what gives each one of these handmade items a little bit of personality. And those little tiny mistakes are how you know that somebody really made something handmade and it wasn't just made on a factory. All right, so now we are thinning out some moccasin brown and we're just going to highlight some of the feathers. Uh, this first one I kind of stumbled around on, but it helped me really figure out what parts I wanted to highlight and how much I wanted to. Uh, so I'm again, I'm using a stiff bristle dry brush and I'm using an Another one of the couple is when necessary to uh, get some of the excess paint off. And then you can dip back in there and reapply uh, so that you're not dipping as much at one time. And again, if you really don't like the way something's turning out and you, you just paint over it, pick a different color, start over. Don't be afraid. You, you can't mess it up. Happy accidents, right? We Bob Ross this stuff, man. <clears throat> All right, so now we're just going to take and add a little bit of yellow to what was left of that moccasin brown. And I didn't think that that was dark enough. Uh, what we're doing is mixing together uh, some color for the beaks. And I wanted them to be yellow, but I wanted them to be dingy. And so we're adding some more espresso bean. And I felt that was a little too dark. So here is a couple drops of antique white. And that was perfect. So um, a small, flat, uh, firm bristle brush again. And... If you just kind of load up your brush and start at the top and pull down, uh, you'll see I have a better technique the next couple of beaks, I feel. All right, see, there you go. A nice, clean line. Don't even have to try really hard. And so I wanted it to be kind of dingy and mottled. So I did not put a second coat on this. And this is the same color I end up using for the eyes here in just a little bit. You'll see. So we go through and do all four birds beaks. And if you just want to do one or if you want to do like dozens and have like an entire flock of buzzards, you know, standing around a dead body in your front yard, uh, you do as many as you need. So I decided a lot of buzzards uh, have this extra lobby part on the front of their beak. Oh, I hate you, stringy, stringy glue. Uh, so we're just taking a little bit of hot glue and adding it on there. Uh, you know, you just add a little bit of time, uh, move it around. Uh, each one is unique as a fingerprint on the bird themselves. So it's okay that they don't all look the same. Try different techniques. Um, you'll get different results. And again, you'll, you'll figure out what works. So, uh, and I, I pulled off a piece, uh, that I thought was excess from earlier and pulled off some black paint. So we'll fix that in a second. Right here. There we go. Poor baby. All right. So now I'm taking just the antique white and we are dry brushing it on the neck. Uh, buzzards just really don't have uh, very many uh, actual feathers on their heads and necks because they stick their heads and necks down into dead, decaying bodies. You gross. If you had a bunch of feathers on your head, that would be stuck there and you'd be gooey. It would be gross. They, you know, that. So we are just going to dry brush this because they're, it's, 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 you know, they're dirty. They're dusty. We want these to look kind of mess, menacing and dark. So I, really by the time I got to the fourth bird, I was really happy with my technique. Uh, so if I ever do them again, I know exactly how to kind of do it and how I would want them.
because I, you know, I do do the same uh, craft every once in a while. Uh, the tombstones were actually something that I had done a couple of years ago, and uh, I added to and changed up and improved upon my first design. So uh, you'll get to see some of my first design when we have our bonus video. All right, so now uh, I'm taking some rusty nail and putting a coat on the part that we added there on top of the beak. So I thought I was going to be able to do this in quick succession. However, I did have to let it dry a little bit longer than I had anticipated. Um, I get to do the first one right away, but the next one is still gooey. So uh, I would let it sit, you know, 20, 30 minutes. Uh, or you can use a hair dryer if you're in a hurry. If you ever need anything to dry more quickly and you're in a hurry, just get out the hair dryer. And, you know, use your own judgment. Maybe you don't think it needs a second coat. I thought it needed a second coat. All right. And then here's number four. Bam. And just using a, a round... Uh, brush nice and pointy and just dobbing on the eyes and that finishes up the craft for this week thank you so much for checking out another halloween diy craft if you like this video check out some of my other videos for other inspiring crafts smash that like and subscribe button until next time keep on crafting